What's up YouTube? I'm Michael, behind the camera is Ellie. We are the bill paying hobbyists. Looking for ways to stretch out your budget? Maybe you wanna just add some more product to your side hustle? Or you're just looking for DIY projects to maybe do around the house? Then this is where you wanna be. You got three buttons to hit. One is the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that, it's free. Next, share our videos so we can get out there and everybody can see us and don't forget to like. And if you wanna be notified when we send out our new videos every week, don't forget to hit the notification bell. All right, so you've seen our video where we refurbished my table saw and my planer and my, what was the other one? Oh, the chop saw. And I get to use all of my tools now. I well, envious. and she was envious. Now it's time to help out Ellie and we're going to lubricate and do a little bit of maintenance on her sewing machine and her serger. So let's get to it. So this is Ellie's sewing machine. It sat in storage for quite a long time and we wanna make sure that it's up to par. 12 years, yeah. Make sure it's up to par and can work. She wants to make a skirt. She likes to sew and she wants to try her hand at making a skirt. Thanks to Bernadette Banner. <laughs> Go check her out, that lady's pretty cool. So it's a Brother XL 3010 and I'm not a professional sewing machine mechanic or anything like that. I don't have a sewing shop. I am just going based off of what I've read, what I've learned and going through the manual to just get this lubricated and cleaned up. That's all I'm doing. This does not replace, if you have a sewing machine and you use it a lot, it does not replace taking it to a shop to have it professionally maintained and cleaned every six months to a year, every, have it serviced. That's what we're gonna do. And then once we're done with this, we're gonna work on her serger. And before we get started, a few tools that we're gonna need, some small screwdrivers. I'm gonna use some toothpicks paper towels, nice soft toothbrush, some other screwdrivers I'm gonna need, some lubricating oil, that's what came with this one, and this little brush. This is a little bit older machine. First thing we wanna do is remove our extension plate. This one pops up and then comes out. There's some tape here, I need to get rid of some of that so that we can get the seam allowance plate off. Now I need to take out these two screws right here. Not that many people have these around anymore, but you grab yourself a quarter and it'll fit right in there. I'm gonna raise my foot up and drop that off so it's out of the way. And now I can pull my plate up and get it out of the way. Okay, we've already removed the extension table, so now we're gonna drop the shuttle cover. It just folds down like that. And then we're gonna remove this bobbin case. You just grab this little lever right here and we pull it out straight out like that. That's out of the way. And now you wanna take these retaining arms and you want to slide them out of the way and pull that see how that slides right out. Take your retaining ring out of the way. Now we want to remove what they call is the hook right here. We just grab this center post and we just pull it out just like that. Now the hook's out of the way. If you look at this, it's really not that dirty down in here. But we want to take our little brush and we want to make sure it's nice and clean. Do not use compressed air. If you use compressed air, all you're going to do is push all of this lint and everything into your machine and you don't want it in the machine, you want it out. Now you can use a vacuum uh, and I may use a vacuum here in a little bit but I'm gonna use it with a very small attachment, homemade attachment of course, to make sure I can get as much lint out of here as possible. Okay, I have a little bit more lint here and here all up in this area. So I wanna try to get that all down. However, if you notice, Where's it gonna go when I start brushing it? It's gonna go down in there. So let's do this. I have these stir straws and I taped them all together really, really tight so they can't, you know, the center can't push out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these on my vacuum and connect it to the hose and then I can come in here with my vacuum cleaner and do this. What this allows, it allows the dirt to get up in there but I won't suck up any small parts or something by accident just in case something's loose inside. So let's get that done. One thing I didn't mention before also is make sure your needle is all the way up. You don't want it down here and you, you want it up there and you know make sure it's unplugged now that that's all clean there's only a couple places you really ever need to oil on your machine and one of them is right here where this bearing is where it turns you see where that rotates around you want to make sure that's nice and lubricated and the other is up in here and we'll do that in a minute it's up in top so a lot of the newer machines come with a bottle with an extension hose on and all that we don't have that we have this this is what it came with and i checked to make sure 
just in case this happened to be for clippers. For hair clippers, I checked that and it says you can use them both. They're pretty much the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these little tools out of the way. Get my paper towel over here and take the oil and I'm just gonna put a little bit on the end of my toothpick and I'm gonna drop it into place. And instead I'm putting it everywhere I don't want it to go. Let's try that again. I can see why that little extension hose would be nice to have. All right, and then we're gonna rotate it around. Hmm, I see a spot. Ooh, look at all that I missed. Ooh, look at all that. Can you see that? Right. There. So another tool to have with you when you're doing your cleaning of your sewing machine is to have a flashlight. Very beneficial. All right, much better. Let me try the vacuum again. All right, so we're gonna put it back together. I just wanna make sure this is all clean. We're gonna put it back together, and to do that, we need to put the hook back in place. Oh, that's why, because you can't do it with the needle in the way. You gotta make sure your needle's all the way up to put it in. Right there, that's why it didn't look right, because it goes this way, with that point at the bottom. You see that? Just like that, and that's just, just like that. Right. You want to put the retaining ring back in and this notch right here goes to the top. So the bobbin, your thread's going to be on top and it slides in here like this. The thread goes in this little notch down like so. That's it for your bobbin. And then this slides in just like this. Make sure your bobbin stays in there. And this slides in until it clicks. Boom, that's in. Close that, that's done. Now we need to put our seam allowance plate back on. So I asked Ellie why she put the tape there. And this just slides back in, just be careful. It goes in the right spot. You know, you're gonna match up your holes. The tape, and she said it was probably just a spot that she used as like a makeshift dry erase board in case she was trying to mark something and she didn't want to mark on the middle. And knowing Ellie, probably exactly what she did. She doesn't like to mark up her stuff that much. So you just put your screw in and turn it as much as you can with your finger so you get it close so you're not turning with a quarter the entire time if you don't have a screwdriver that fits it. Just get it started by hand and then just kind of turn it with your fingers. Grab your handy then quarter. Turn until it's tight. I'm not trying to over tighten it. Just trying to get it tight so that my plate's not moving around. And that's it for that part. Let's see if this one, after reviewing everything, I'll oh, put your foot back on. There's another location to check for lubrication and oil and things. On this one, the screw is here. On the newer ones, the screw's in the back, I believe. So. Let's take that off. Let's see if we can't find any lint or anything on the inside. Now I'm gonna to try to take you in a little closer. Right there is another pivot point that you wanna put a little bit of oil on. You don't wanna do a lot, but you wanna make sure it's all clean in there too, and I don't see a lot. Same thing, I'll put a little bit of oil on my toothpick. I'll do that a couple times. You don't want to use a lot of oil. And then I want to turn this a few times. Let that oil do its thing. 
and I can see some fuzz and stuff down in there and I'm gonna get my vacuum out and get all that it's all in the back back there see all that fuzz in there just try the vacuum a little bit now let's put it back together she's ready to go and then we'll put the extension plate back on strange how that's a different color than this the machine must have sat in the sun for a while so let's plug it in plug it into the wall we will turn it on the light works and that's on our pedal Looks like running pretty good. Doesn't bounce a lot. Balanced, smooth, ready to go. And now we're gonna get the serger done. It's in very good condition. Let's see what we can do. Everything I've seen on sergers, you don't wanna go crazy taking this thing apart. So I think we're just gonna clean this area here, get the thread out of the way. We're gonna clean this area here and call it good. So let's get into it. And let's see if we get this thread out of the way. Ah, slide it over and down. Looky there. Ooh, look at all of that. As you can see, this one has screws in it just like the sewing machine did. However, these are smaller. I'm not going to be able to use a quarter, so I have a little screwdriver here. That should do the trick for me. No, I cannot because my needle is in the way. As a sewing machine, pay attention to your needle. Get your needle out of the way. In this case, needles. It's a double needle. It is a serger. That much I do know. There we go. That will slide out of the way now. Got that out of the way. Now, let's see what we got going on here. Here we go. Boom. Thread out of the way. No, it's compression. Just kind of do that get it out of the way. All right, so that's out of the way. And again, I don't see a lot of places to go to try to clean. A lot of screws to take off, and it looks fairly clean on the inside. That looks like it might need... There might be a oil point in there. So I'm not going to get crazy. Here, there's another screw. It looks like there might be an oil point here because of the arm. So I'm going to take this screw out. All right, for this one, that pivot right there, there's a pivot right there. That turns, looks like that might need a little bit of oil right here on this little shaft right here. Kind of slides up and down. So I'm gonna put a little bit right there and I'm gonna put a little bit right there. It's clean. I mean, I'm gonna run the brush over it real quick, but it's clean. So let's clean it up first and then we'll go from there. Well, it seems as though as my brush has disappeared. So I am going to use this one. Again, there's really just not a lot of dirt in here, which is really cool. Give it a little bit of good oil and we'll call it good. Again, you just want to clean all these parts in here, get all lint and everything out. You just won't, don't want to hamper any of it from working. And I'm just going to put just a bare little bit. That's it. Let's do the inside. You gotta get down in there. You see that down in there? You gotta get that. And then clean all of this outside. So I'm gonna have an oil point right there. And I'm gonna have an oil point right there. And it looks like one right over here because those all turn when I'm turning the wheel. So I wanna make sure I have a little bit of oil in all of those. And that should help keep this machine running well. Let's put a little bit right there. Let's put a little bit right there. Let's put a little bit right there. There we go. Now, from everything I read, you should probably do this once a month. And then you should take it into a professional when you take it into them they will completely strip the housing off strip it down to bare bones and completely clean it up and make sure that it's all oiled nice and neat all right i think i'm good there 
and do a little bit of vacuum cleaning and then I'm gonna slide it all back together. There's really not much to put together. I'll cover back on. Slide our tray back in, make sure our needles are all the way up. So it's lined up over your holes correctly. Close our cover. Close this cover, it slides into place. And let's see if we can find a plug. We have light and Hardly any vibration at all, just a little. Works fine. Awesome. She should be happy. All cleaned up, ready to go. I'll leave the stringing and the threading or whatever you want to call it to her. So there you have it. We got both machines clean. They're all done. Took me about an hour. Didn't cost me any money. And hopefully it will extend the life of both machines. Uh, again, it doesn't negate the fact that it needs to be taken to a to a sewing machine shop and have it properly serviced every six months to a year but at least now we can keep it going we don't have to worry about them seizing up or having any damage and the puppies are ready to play so it's time to get outside thanks for watching we hope you learned something if you have something that you want to see us fix work on do a diy project please put it below in the comments and we'll see what we can do don't forget to subscribe like and share we really do appreciate it don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll see when our new videos come out Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. We love you.